recently we've been having a contests on the THP forum talking about grips used on tour. And the numbers were pretty staggering. I figured the best way to do this is come right to Golf Pride and talk about how much tour use you have. Yeah, first of all, thanks, Josh, for coming here. And um, that's the thing. Most people, consumers out there, players, even top pyramid players, amateurs, have no idea of the usage numbers of Golf Pride on the PGA Tour. Um, so we do the Daryl survey, you know, not every event, but nearly every event, certainly every major. And the numbers shake out roughly per year to be about 80 plus percent of the guys on tour are playing Golf Pride grips on the majority of their swinging clubs. Um, and that's 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 usage that does not come from paid endorsement. Um, these guys use Golf Pride because it's simply the best product. Is that why the golfer doesn't know? Because yeah. Because you can't talk about it. Yeah, that's a big thing about it, right? So, I mean, all these guys play Golf Pride and, you know, because we're not endorsing them or paying them, um, you know, we can't use their name or likeness um, in the media. Uh, but, you know, there, there's some players out there that really take note of what the players are using. I mean, everything equipment-wise and the grip is part of that. Uh, but, you know, when we go out and talk to consumers and ask them the question, you know, what percentage of guys in the PGA Tour play Golf Pride, most of them just, you know, have no idea that the usage is that high. And when you ask them, you know, which brand out there the, um, do they think, you know, has the highest usage numbers, they always go down the road of like a title list or, you know, a tailor-made or something like that. But, um, you know, the fact of the matter is there's really no other brand out there that can come close to us as far as usage numbers. And again, we don't pay anybody to use the product, um, and that makes it even more amazing, really. One of the things we noticed when we were starting our contests was when it started, the guesses were rather low because people didn't know. Mm -hmm. And now they're higher as people learned every week. Oh, eight people using it, 10, pe 10 out of 10. We had an 11 out of 10 one week because there was a tie. Right. Um, what do you attribute it to more, and I, kind of a convoluted question here, but is it more about the grips they're comfortable and the, that they grew up using, or is it about the, you guys pushing performance in each product? And for our viewers watching this, we have a bunch of videos coming up on the different products and the technology that goes into them that people probably have never seen before. Yeah. So is it a performance-driven thing, or is it a comfort thing? I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, you know, we're very fortunate because we've been around for so long, you know, almost 70 years, uh, that the majority of the guys on tour, really all the guys on tour, probably grew up playing our stuff. Um, you know, if you look at all the top flight amateurs that are out there, I mean, all the way from the AJGA, all the way up through the college ranks, to the mini tours, to the professional tours, most of those guys grew up playing golf pride. And it could be, you know, of a particular model like the Victory Grip or the Tour Velvet or the MCC, whatever it is. But they kind of got their chops, um, you know, their professional chops, you know, honed their craft playing golf pride, you know, experienced success. So clearly they've become comfortable using our product. Um, and, you know, they've stuck with that through the years. But to your point about the performance, I mean, that absolutely plays into it because the fact of the matter is if the grips didn't perform out there, it doesn't matter that they grew up playing with them or they're comfortable with them or they get them for free. They're not going to use our stuff unless it performs. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a combination of both those things, but clearly there's a comfort level. And then there's the fact that, you know, they just have access to our grips whenever they want. You mm -hmm. know, it's our tour team out there servicing the players, you know, making sure that they have what they need whenever they need it. One of the things that I found interesting is I wrongly assumed that there were maybe two grips being used on tour mm -hmm. and the different tours. But almost every one of your grips, if not every one of them, has tour use. Yeah, that's the funny thing about it is, you know, everything in our, in our product range, even like what we would classify as more of a comfort performance grip, they're used on some tour globally. But if you kind of boil it down to the PGA Tour, that one's a little bit funny because, um, you know, there's really just a few grips that the guys out there on tour are using. But the cool thing about it is, and, and, and you know, some amateurs kind of recognize this because they'll call us up and ask us if they can still get these grips. But you know, we do still make some heritage models for the PGA Tour. I um, mean, I'm talking about like the Victory Grip or the V55, um, or certain colors that we've retired. I mean, if a top flight player comes to us and has gotten comfortable with the grip, um, and we still have the molds, and we do, uh, we'll continue to make that grip for them because. You know, we want them to, to stay happy and stay in golf pride. But, you know, obviously we're always trying to introduce, um, you know, new technologies to them. We'd like them to be playing the stuff that's available to the public. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll keep making those heritage grips for them as long as they want. So one of the things that's interesting, because we're sitting here at, I guess you'd say Pinehurst, uh, is I wandered into a room that I probably shouldn't have. That's kind of what I do. And there's 
boxes and boxes and boxes of grips with players' names on them. Right. Uh, and I was rummaging through because that's that's kind of what I do. Right. There are grips there that you guys just don't make anymore. Mm-hmm. Those just it has player's name on it, and you know it goes there. I I don't know how much detail, but one of the things that I thought was cool was they had the tiger putter box. They have you know all the pin grips with no paint on there. That was really cool for those that didn't know that. That's a golf pride grip. How many or how long can you continue to just make grips if everybody starts doing I want a one off and yep. there's only so much room in this building? Exactly. First of all, you shouldn't have walked into that room. I, I wanted that to be locked. I didn't want you in there. I'm kidding you though. But uh, but yeah, you're right. Um, you know, it's funny we talk about that a lot. And we always want the players trying our new stuff because you know there's this skew proliferation. As long as they continue to play these older models, I mean, can really grow with as far as our tour stock goes. Um, but you know, we want to continue to have those guys play our stuff. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you were talking about some of the specialized grips that we make for tour, and that's always like a big question to us. Is you know. Other OEMs do this. I'm not talking about grip companies. Right. But I'm talking about like you know your T Mags, your uh, your Titleist, your Callaways. And there's like this specialized tour issue equipment, um, and we do do that on a small scale here at Golf Pride. But the fact of the matter is, 99% of the guys on the PGA Tour are playing the same exact grips that the consumer can buy at the retail store or at the pro shop. We do make some specialized products for players, but the material is the same. But it's more of a tweak on a core bar. Maybe they want a, you know, like a Nick Price likes a 63 core bar because he likes a skinnier grip. So we'll throw that in the mold and make those for him. Um, you know, it could be a, a finishing process on the grip. Some players out there um, like a cord grip, but they don't like to see as much cord exposed on the surface of the grip. They still like the firmness of it, but they just don't want to see as much uh, cord on the surface. So we'll use a different buffing wheel to, to minimize the exposure of the cord. Um, you know, different paint fills. If a player wanted something that just wasn't crazy for us to do, uh, they, you know, they went to a, a college that had, um, you know, <clears throat> you know, their colors were orange or something, and they wanted an orange paint fill. We'll oh, consider. That sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we'll consider that stuff for them. Uh, but we certainly want them to to be playing the stuff that's offered, you know, in the stores because you know it's easier for us. At the end of the day, it's going to be easier for them uh, to access the grips because if they have this special one-off, um, you know, it can take longer to get the, to them. But and, and it's funny because I did go through a lot of the mm-hmm. boxes. Most of them are the same grips that I can buy in the store, mm-hmm. and uh, I found that rather interesting. But like I was saying, every one of your SKUs is being used. Yeah. Is there a grip that is gravitated towards? I know the forever, the new decade was the easiest to see on TV. Right. But is there a model that is the most used and you guys continue to just be proud of that? Yeah, so hands down, without a doubt, um, it is the Tour Velvet. That is the number one grip on the PGA Tour. Um, If you go to any event, field of 154 players, half of the field is playing the Tour Velvet. Wow. And, you know, most people see that grip and it's just... It's all black. It has a homogenous texture pattern on there, the plus sign, you know, the Golf Pride logo down in the forward front area. Some players like to turn that over. Uh, but that is the grip that most guys in the PGA Tour use because it's a combination of several things that they like about it. You know, it's the understated look, of course, right? It's just all performance. Um, it's that texture pattern that's the same throughout, so it feels the same under both hands. Um, You know, it's the durometer of the rubber material. It's a certain firmness. It's not too firm. It's not too soft. It's just perfect. Um, You know, it's the taper profile of that grip. You know, everything works together to make that just the highest performing grip in the game of golf. That's what the players like out there. Uh, When you get beyond the Tour Velvet, you you start talking about the MCC family that you mentioned, the one that's Mm -hmm. multicolored. And that one, you know, does very well for us. Uh, but, you know, there's a smaller percentage of guys out there use the MCC versus the Tour Velvet. The Tour Velvet clearly is the number one grip in the world as far as the Tour goes. Um, and it, it's funny because if you rewind, you know, 30 years ago, it was the victory grip. Correct. And, and that was the one that... It know, was on every club we saw. Yeah, I mean, you grew up with it. I grew up with it. I mean, not only was it on I'm every... I'm dating myself here. Me that. too. <laughs> but, but not only was that on every, you know, grip that the players used, but it was on uh, almost all of the OEM programs back in the day. I mean, if you go look at all the Titleist stuff, all the Tommy Armour 845s, all of it that was... That was the, my set. Yeah, all of it was the Green Victory Group. That's right. Their name might be in the logo down there in the insert area, uh, but it was the Green Victory, clearly. But now the Tour Velvet has eclipsed that as far as, uh, you know, the number played on tour. And really, when you look at the MCC, um, you know, that's probably going to eclipse... The Tour Velvet eventually, because if you look at the NCAA, 
uh, the Daryl Survey, yeah. most of those guys grew up with uh, the MCC grip, whereas you know the generation before them grew up with the Tour Velvet. So there's these cycles that the players go through. And as you continue to design for performance, which again you'll hear more about in, in an upcoming episode, is you guys do design for performance. It's not a look thing. It's not a just a material thing or just a feel thing. It is performance driven. So as you design and the new crop of younger players starts using that grip, it'll continue to just snowball into that. Yeah, I mean, that's what we hope. You know, it's getting them started early, comfortable with golf pride. But you're right, it's all about the performance. And that's, you know, something that we don't rest our laurels on. I mean, we're always trying to innovate. Even though we have this enormous usage on the PGA Tour, you know, we're always, you know, trying to push the envelope as far as the material technology goes. Um, because that's the other thing that most people don't realize about golf pride is, you know, we make the grips from scratch. And not a lot of comp- grip companies out there can say that. We're taking the raw rubber from the plantations on the trucks back to the factory and turning that into product. A lot of other companies out there don't do that. You know, they're simply farming it out to some other company to make their product. You know, we turn this raw material into product from start to finish. Um, and, and everything through that process, we've done it for so long, you know, it's really been dialed in. And that's really what makes our grips perform the best in the market, perform the best on tour. Um, and it allows us to continue to, to innovate and push the envelope as far as grip technology goes. Final question. We've talked a lot about tour usage, but one of the interesting things is that we've met with, and our viewers have seen us talk to a lot of different companies, and the information they get from tour usage. How much does that go into your design process to future products? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, it plays a huge role in our design process for sure. Um, and you're right, the other you know, companies, competitors, really can't do that because when you have 80 plus percent usage, you can take the data, you can stack it up, cut it up, and really figure out opportunities to you know, um, you know, get grips to the players that you know, kind of fill some gaps that they're looking for. Uh, but it really helps us develop the story for the consumer because you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, whatever the guys on tour are using, the consumers look to. You know, they want to know what the guys on tour, the best players in the world, are using. Uh, and when we develop this stuff, starting with the PGA Tour, it really trickles down to the consumer. Not to say that we don't do a tremendous amount of consumer testing, because we do. Um, that's a huge part of our process. We always take it out to consumers, high handicappers as well, um, you know, to make sure that what we're developing, you know, checks the box for them. Mm-hmm. But you're right. I mean, it always starts with the PGA Tour. Um, and it, it's using these players that have grown accustomed and comfortable with golf pride to provide us the feedback and they're happy to do it to develop the product that's really going to help them you know, win championships in the future.